and because life uh, we've got a lot of things I want to try and get done today and I thought I would just make this quick video for you uh, especially since it's been a little while um, so I found an article a little bit ago that I thought was really cool and I wanted to share the information with you so um, I'm gonna probably try and do a little or uh, a few more of these uh, short, uh, short videos, um, just kind of me sharing information with you. Um, so this uh, article I found is from um, phys.org, P-H-Y-S is in like physics. Um, it's an article, or excuse me, it's a, a website that I like to go to for information about um, different scientific research that's being done. Um, I kind of tend to look mostly at the astronomy and physics categories, but it also has um, really good information about research being done in other categories of science. So if that's your thing, um, a great website if you're not familiar with it. Um, so this came out a couple weeks ago. And uh, the title of the write-up here is a personal dosimeter is in your first aid kit. So um, if you're not familiar with dosimeters, they are a tool that we use uh, to gauge the amount of radiation someone's been exposed to. Um, so that can be helpful for um, your average person in the event of something like a um, nuclear or radiological disaster, something like um, a um, nuclear power plant meltdown or a dirty bomb attack or something like that. Um, a lot of people who work with radioactive substances use a dosimeter at work. Um, so if that's you, you're already familiar with those seminars. Um, looking at Amazon, which is where I tend to do a lot of my um, price estimating and shopping, that kind of thing. Um, and to be fair, I'm looking at four star uh, products because I generally prefer to look at products that should be a little bit higher quality, uh, especially when we're looking at something that would be uh, impactful on your health and safety um especially in a, an emergency so um they've got cards um that kind of just show um how much radiation exposure you've had like um it'll go um i don't think what to compare it to um anyway it's just a card and like it changes colors basically uh to show like how much um radiation you've been exposed to um, they use that in labs and things a lot. Um, those run about $20, um, it looks like, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, depending on uh, your situation and which product you're buying. Um, for like a legit actual dosimeter, um, proper radiation meter, you're looking at at least $80. Um, I found a couple in that range. Um, obviously, we're talking American dollars. Uh, most of them were running at least 120. That was probably about the most common uh, low end price that I saw. And then it goes up from there. There were a lot of them that were double that, you know, in like the 220, $240 range. So um, dosimeters are not really a cheap item. Um, even if you're getting the cards, you know, they're kind of a one time use thing. Those, uh, that can add up. So um, I was really kind of curious when I saw this title here that says a personal dosimeter is in your first aid kit. So um, I went ahead and read through the article and I just wanted to share a little bit with you. Um, I will link the um, article in the description so that you can read through it yourself if you'd like, um, because I am just going to kind of summarize some of the um, 
the, the most relevant parts for you. Um, so it talks about um, emergency dosimetry and how um, it tends to be kind of destructive to um, get those radiation measurements. Because um, generally you have to, uh, if you don't have a specific uh, meter that's made for that or specific product, and you're measuring radiation, you really have to break down what you're um, measuring radiation in. And so um, in the past, they've used things like bricks um, or roof tiles, and those aren't always available. Um, and that can be kind of destructive and, and they're very area specific. Um, you know, and we don't use a lot of brick in construction anymore, um, that kind of thing. So um, they were looking for things that people carry with them all the time. Um, I am looking at this on my smartphone, which coincidentally can be used as a um, emergency dosimeter. Um, but again, because it's destructive, um, you know, people don't really want to um, take the, the glass and the um, resistors and break those down because that ruins your phone. So um, what they found, um, they actually, um, at this institute, um, researchers in Krakow at um, the Institute of National Physics of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Um, so that's uh, abbreviated to IFJPAN. Um, so scientists were looking at things that people had with them that they also wouldn't mind um, being broken down. And so they started looking at everyday products and they found that um, one thing that actually works really well um, is um, painkillers. So um, they said specifically um, ibuprofen and paracetamol, um, that's kind of the generic names. Um, if you're here, here in the US, um, paracetamol is called acetaminophen. Um, ibuprofen brand name is uh, Advil, um, is the most common brand name that you think of. Um, the paracetamol or acetaminophen is Tylenol. So those are the two most uh, effective products. And so those are things that they were saying here. Um, women tend to carry basic painkillers in their purse. Um, it's something that a lot of people will, will have handy. Um, they did not specify here in this article. Um, they wanted to do some follow-up research, but um, they didn't specify whether it should be something that is um, coded, if that makes a difference, um, or if it was anything like gel caps or tablets. Um, I am assuming that tablets would be the best. Um, well, in fact, it looks like they looked at tablets specifically, so um, rather than things like gel caps. So um, tablets are going to be a lot easier because like I was talking about with things like bricks or the glass from your smartphone, they still have to break that down. So they have to turn it into like a fine powder. Um, so that's going to be easy. So obviously with your tablets. So what they suggest is if there's some sort of radiation exposure incident, um, again, something like um, a dirty bomb or some sort of radiation release, um, a uh, nuclear power plant meltdown, something like that. If you feel like you possibly have been exposed, then take a couple of... Um, tablets out of your medicine bottle, or um, if you have like the individually wrapped, um, then just unwrap a couple, um, take those out of the package and put them in your pocket. Um, the, the one in the pocket because exposure to the sun will add in some radiation and make the readings less accurate. So put it in your pocket, that way it's with you, so it measures what you're getting 
Um, but again, you're not getting that sunlight directly on it that's going to affect the, the measurements. Um, and so then when you get to the point where you're able to get to a hospital or they're able to do some field testing to measure uh, radiation exposure, they're able to just grind up those tablets. And there's a couple of different ways they can um, measure that uh, with um, different light properties. Um, let's see here. Um, basically expose it to a specific uh, wavelength of blue light luminescence. Um, there's another, um, oh, they can also do it by heating uh, to stimulate the glowing by heating. Um, but they're able to look at the glow of the, um, that comes off of the uh, ground up painkiller tablet. Um, they're able to look at the glow and measure the specific wavelengths of light and how intense it is. And they're able to tell pretty close to exactly um, how much radiation exposure the tablet has had and therefore um, how much you have had if you're carrying that with you in your pocket, um, like has been recommended. So with that precise measurement of the amount of radiation you've been exposed to, that really helps them to figure out a appropriate treatment regimen for you um, and helps them to um, also be able to do some triage and find the people who've been exposed to the highest amounts of radiation um, versus the lower amounts and treat the people um, with the higher radiation exposure um, first. So um, timing for treatment is better, as well as the specificity of the treatment will be uh, more appropriate for everyone. So um, like I said, I thought this was a really cool article. It's a um, simple solution um, that you can use. Uh, most of us have uh, painkillers like that handy. Um, we may not have uh, the, the tablet form but let's be honest, you know, buying some acetaminophen or ibuprofen, um, you know, you can get the little packets of, you know, two pills or whatever at a gas station for like a dollar, or at least you used to be able to. Um, anyway, it's pretty cheap. Um, and so that's going to be something that, you know, you can carry with you in your pocket or um, wherever you are. And then just if you're, suspecting or, or aware of a radiation exposure, open up that packet, open up the ball, um, take a couple out, put them in your pocket, and uh, you're good to go as far as measuring that exposure. So um, can be a big help. Like I said, simple, cheap solution. Um, so I thought this was really cool, and I, I wanted to bring it to you and share it with you. Um, they are going to be doing some follow-up research to find out a little bit more about exactly which products are the most effective and um, anything else that they can figure out. Um, you know, for instance, one thing I wondered about is if their you know, tablets, they usually come in the coded tablets or the non-coded tablets. Um, you know, you've got your enteric coding to help it um, go down easier, not upset your stomach, that kind of thing. So. Um, it didn't specify here what kind of tablet it was. Um, just to play it safe, I would think the non-coded tablets would be best, um, but that's just my own thinking. Um, so yeah, if you're concerned about um, possibly a, a radiation exposure, so if you live near a uh, nuclear power plant or someplace where they use uh, radioactive uh, materials for things, uh, nuclear storage, um, or if you're in a big city or something where there's possibility, uh, increased likelihood of a dirty bomb or something like that. Um, I know that's kind of a scary thing for a lot of people, but um, this is a simple way. If, if that's a risk for you, um, this is a nice, simple and cheap way to um, be prepared and be able to um, protect yourself and those around you um, and get some measurements for some precise treatment 
um, should there ever be an exposure where something happens. So, um, like I said, I will link the article in the comments. Um, let me know what you think of the, the format here. Um, kind of just a shorter, um, may not be as, as short um, as I thought. I, I tend to talk a fair amount. Um, but just kind of me bringing you kind of updates and thoughts and things like that. Um, I'm intending to do that a little bit more, uh, but let me know what you think. Let me know what would be helpful for you, uh, what you'd like to hear about. Um, and I will talk to you again soon.